China's state media reports that astronomers using its newest radio telescope may have detected signals from an extraterrestrial civilization for the very first time. Or not. In fact, probably not. But still, it's an interesting story because it's the first time that its newest 500 meter aperture spherical telescope was used in a targeted search for extraterrestrial intelligence or SETI. The announcement was reported on WeChat on June 14th, but the paper that it's based off is still undergoing peer review, and that means it hasn't been accepted for publication yet. But even if it does get accepted, it's by no means conclusive. The authors aren't claiming they've actually detected an alien signal. Rather, they're saying they've detected an interesting candidate signal that needs to be followed up. The signal was detected during an observation of the Kepler-438 system. It's home to at least one planet that orbits just 0.17 AU from its host star. And that puts the planet much closer to its star than Mercury is from the Sun. However, the star is an M-type red dwarf, so that makes it cooler and dimmer than our Sun. So, at 0.17 astronomical units, the planet orbits well within the star's habitable zone. Now, all that really means is that the planet orbits at a distance where the temperatures would allow water to flow as a liquid on the surface. It doesn't mean that the planet really has liquid water, let alone a civilization that's trying to communicate with us. Besides, red dwarfs pose a lot of challenges for life because those planets are going to be tidally locked with one side getting nuked by ultra-powerful superflares. In fact, I talked about life around a red dwarf in a previous video, so feel free to check that out if you want to learn the gory, violent details. But still, Kepler-438b is a potentially Earth-like planet, and there appears to be an interesting signal associated with it. Now, if any of this seems familiar, it's because it is. In late 2020, there was a lot of buzz about a possible signal detected around the star Proxima Centauri. And Proxima is another red dwarf star, and it happens to be the closest star to our Sun. It hosts two known exoplanets, one of which orbits Proxima in its habitable zone. In 2020, astronomers found an interesting signal detected by the Parkes Radio Telescope in Australia while it was looking at Proxima. However, word leaked out before the astronomers could complete their analysis, and the internet was rife with speculation about the signal's origin. The only problem was that the signal was never heard from again. The team published their analysis in a pair of papers in the October 2021 issue of Nature. The papers acknowledged that while the signal was interesting, it was more than likely interference generated by nearby electronics. Now there's a new signal of interest, this time detected with China's FAST telescope while observing another red dwarf star. And once again, the odds are that it's more than likely radio interference but it was at least detected with a new telescope that was using a new detection technique. So I thought it'd be interesting to break it all down in some detail and see what's next in the search for this particular signal. FAST is the largest single dish telescope in the world. Large radio arrays like the Very Large Array can certainly achieve higher resolution than FAST can, but FAST's giant single dish antenna makes the telescope extremely sensitive. Now, although the dish is fixed in place, its receiver can be maneuvered around to listen to signals coming from different parts of the dish. And that allows FAST to effectively point anywhere within a 26 degree radius of the zenith while still using 300 meters of the dish's total 500 meter aperture. It's this combination of high sensitivity and the ability to track targets for extended periods that makes FAST ideal for SETI. To that end, an international team from China and the University of California, Berkeley used FAST to carry out the first targeted SETI observations between 2020 and 2021. During that time, FAST looked at 33 exoplanetary systems, 29 of which host planets in their habitable zones. And traditionally, SETI assumes that alien signals are likely to be narrow band. In other words, they should only span a very narrow range of frequencies because those kinds of signals are easily distinguished from those created by natural sources. Unfortunately, man-made signals are narrow band as well, and there's a lot of them everywhere. 
The signals are collectively referred to as radio frequency interference, or RFI. RFI is a real problem in all of radio astronomy, but it makes SETI particularly difficult because you're looking for a faint, narrow band signal amid a cacophony of man-made signals. It's like trying to hear a distant whisper in the middle of a football stadium. And that's why the Chinese government established a 5-kilometer radio quiet zone around the FAST telescope. But that doesn't mean that there can't be some RFI from aviation, spacecraft, or even someone who accidentally left their cell phone on. And that's why SETI uses an on-off observing technique to figure out if a signal might really be coming from a star, or if it's just background RFI. The idea goes like this. An incoming signal should be confined to a relatively small viewing angle that the telescope sees around the star. This viewing angle is called the telescope's beam. The signal's origin can therefore be tested by simply pointing the telescope's beam away from the star, listening for a while, and then returning to the star. If the signal disappears when the beam points away, and it reappears when it points back toward the source, you can at least know that the signal is probably coming from the direction of the star. On the other hand, RFI should be detectable when the telescope is pointed both on and off the main target. So any persistent signals like these are immediately rejected as RFI. Now the problem with this approach is that it's inefficient. It takes FAST around 10 minutes to repoint its receiver to a different location in the sky, then listen, and then another 10 minutes to return to the star. So that's why FAST employs a multiple beam receiver to look at 19 individual beams on the sky simultaneously. The central beam, called beam 1, is pointed directly at the target, while the six outermost beams serve as the off sources. A signal that reaches beam 1 and any of the outer beams is rejected as RFI. On the other hand, if a signal is detected in beam 1, but not in any of those outermost beams, well then it becomes a candidate for follow-up. This technique is called multi-beam coincidence matching, or MBCM. The advantage is that FAST can make both on and off source observations simultaneously without ever having to move its receiver. So let's suppose there is a signal that shows up only in the central beam, but doesn't show up anywhere else. How then could we know it's potentially extraterrestrial in nature? Well, FAST is mounted on Earth, and Earth is rotating. And that means sometimes the telescope is rotating toward the source, while other times it's rotating away. And that's going to introduce a change in frequency due to the Doppler effect. So over the course of an observation, we should expect the signal to drift in frequency, maybe going from a higher frequency to a lower, or possibly even from a lower to a higher frequency. Either way, we get what's called a waterfall plot, because it kind of looks like the profile of a waterfall. Now, likewise, any signals that don't drift at all are therefore rejected as RFI because they're probably just coming from a stationary ground source. In the 2020 survey, all observations looked for a narrowband signal drifting between 1.05 and 1.45 gigahertz. And that puts it within the range of frequencies that have very little natural background noise. It's also close to the classic waterhole range of frequencies that might be chosen to get the attention of water-drinking civilizations like ours. Unsurprisingly, the team found a lot of signals within this range, over 1.3 million of them. To narrow them down further, any signal that only illuminated the central beam but none of the outermost beams were promoted to events. And that brought the total down to a little over 2,000 potential events. But even then, many of these events were still rejected as RFI because of the presence of known aircraft or spacecraft at the time. And these can also produce waterfall signals because they're moving relative to the telescope. Still, there was one signal that could not really be ruled out this way. It was the signal recorded while observing Kepler-438. It was detected at 1.14 gigahertz, and its width was on the order of just one hertz or so. Its drift rate was consistent with that of a transmitter moving with an exoplanet. And even more intriguing, it was the only event that was picked up in just the central beam. It also persisted for the entire 20-minute observation with just a small variation in the drift rate. 
The team couldn't find any records of a satellite or deep space probe that was entering the central beam during the observation either. Does this mean that FAST really detected a signal coming from Kepler-438? Well, no, the team doesn't seem to think so. It turns out there's one bit of evidence that suggests the signal may in fact be coming from some ground-based source, including within the instruments onboard FAST itself. This bit of evidence had to do with the signal's polarization. Now, polarization is essentially the angle of the incoming wave. Now, sometimes the wave is approaching us horizontally, sometimes vertically, and usually it's approaching us from some angle in between. Well, fast multi-beam detector can measure polarization. So the team processed the signals against two polarization angles that are exactly 90 degrees from each other. And these two angles were chosen because FAST's instruments tend to generate signals of their own at one of these angles. The chances of an alien signal having exactly the same polarization as FAST's instruments isn't exactly zero, but it should be fairly unlikely. However, the Kepler-438 signal does in fact appear to be fairly strong in one of those two polarizations. If the signal appeared to have roughly the same intensity at either angle, well, that would certainly have strengthened the signal's candidacy. But the fact that it lines up with one of FAST's own polarization angles suggests that it's probably some kind of RFI that's either associated with one of FAST's instruments or some other electronics that are nearby. Now, in order to really know for sure, we'd have to confirm this result with a different telescope. Ideally, that telescope would be built on the far side of the moon because then the moon itself would block RFI from both the sun and earth. And that would make the moon's far side the most radio quiet place in the entire solar system. But such a telescope is a long ways off. And that's why additional observations will have to be made from the ground for now. Now, certainly FAST is going to take another look at Kepler-438, but it's also hoped that additional telescopes like parks in Australia, could follow up with Kepler-438 as well. An independent detection with another telescope would, at the very least, rule out RFI from the area immediately surrounding FAST. A simultaneous detection between FAST and another telescope would probably rule out RFI coming from Earth. But even then, there's still a chance that the RFI signal could be man-made signals coming from deep space probes or anything else we have flying around up there. Now, if all of this sounds like hard, tedious work with a lot of dead ends, well, that's because it is. But the cool thing about the story is that it demonstrates how multi-beam coincident mapping can be a viable technique, not just for the fast telescope, but for any telescope, as long as their outermost beams are far enough away from their central beam. For now, though, nobody seriously is saying that this is likely a signal from an extraterrestrial civilization. Not even the authors of the paper are saying that. It's probably a new form of RFI that we just need to learn about in the vicinity of the FAST telescope. Now, isolating and identifying possible sources of RFI is Definitely not sexy, but it is crucial for continuing the search for alien signals. Now, SETI in the United States is actually a privately funded venture, so if you'd like to help them out, consider making a one-time donation or even a recurring donation. And no, they're not asking me to say this, I just think that it's something that everybody should donate to at least once. And speaking of support, a huge thanks to these wonderful people right here for helping to keep Launchpad Astronomy going, and I'd like to welcome Daniel Durkin, Matt Langford, Christian Frinken, Matthias Skagerholm, and Lisa Terry as my newest Patreon supporters. And if you'd like to join me on this journey through this incredible universe of ours, well, please make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell so that you don't miss out on any new videos. Until next time, stay curious, my friend.